thank you very much for having me along today and I'll, I'll chin you later for not quite remembering that. Uh, no, it's an absolute pleasure to be here today um, and to tell you a wee bit about Elevate and obviously our approach to this. Uh, one of our partners is obviously SDF and we're absolutely delighted to be here, so thank you very much. I'm going to um, cut this presentation down a wee bit in time, so, so I won't necessarily go through all the slides, but the information is there for you. But I'm going to give you a wee bit of information about the PSP itself, the kind of concept, the background, obviously a wee bit about Elevate itself, what we're all about, and, and obviously open it up for some questions at the end, which you can ask me. So, what are we all about? We decided to kind of take a PSP approach to this because there had previously been um, a SAM H trainee programme in Glasgow, which was funded by the NHS. That was a three year programme and it was coming to the end. And it had been a hugely successful programme. Some of you may have been aware of it. <coughs> um, but um, it was helping 10 people each year for a three year period. It was obviously very cost intensive for that. And what the NHS were looking at at that time was, how can we do this better? How can we help and support people in recovery uh, to move forward into sustainable employment? So there were the models of the PSP, and we worked very closely uh, with Ready for Business, who were our um, partners, to kind of look at how could this be done. So it was decided that we would form a PSP. NHS were initially involved um, very heavily at the beginning, kind of pushing this forward. And they are obviously our public um, partners within this. But it was actually in, in here in the Lighthouse, they, they held some information sessions about it, trying to get people involved, obviously put it on public contract Scotland to encourage people to kind of come forward, organisations. And it was actually in the room upstairs, and I'm not sure if any of you were at that event, but it was like everybody and their granny turned up to that event because they thought there might be some money on the table. Sorry, can you hear me okay? I'm, I'm quite aware that I'm going in and out of this. Um, <laughs> so everybody turned up because initially they thought there might be some money attached to this. And quite naturally, organisations kind of fell by the wayside when they realised it wasn't necessarily about that, but it was about looking at service redesign. How can we do things better for people in employability? We have over 30 partners now, and a real mix of partners in different organisations. These are just some of, the, some of the organisations that are part of us. And the unique thing about the PSP approach is our smallest organisation has two employees. Our largest organisation as a partner would be the NHS with thousands upon thousands of employees. Every organisation has the same rights as the other organisation, so everyone's got that same vote at the table. Obviously, you can see some, um, some of them there. So how do we work? Um, naturally, because we're such a large organisation or a large um, partnership, we need to kind of work our, our, work our way through to make sure that we're kind of helping people in the right and appropriate way. And we work through uh, different work streams, kind of following the journey of, of people in recovery. Um, but we fully appreciate um, people don't always follow that natural journey. So from a practical point of view, we have four work streams. Each work stream is a chair and a vice chair. We actually have some of our chairs and our vice chairs. Dave is one of our chairs and Tracy is actually one of our vice chairs as well. They sit in our steering group um, and supporting that is a project team which I manage. In the project team there's myself, there's support workers and there's some NHS staff as well. Oh, just kind of go back one minute. Mentoring is absolutely our overarching theme, and we take a mentoring approach to support work. So I have four support workers within the team. They help and assist people right throughout their journey. So anybody who comes on to Elevate will be linked in with a support worker, and those support workers do take that kind of mentoring approach. And what I mean by that is, not that anybody kind of naturally follows that pathway, but if we were kind of helping somebody and housing was an issue for them, then we would take them along to the housing office. We would have a meeting beforehand with them, we would talk to them about what they wanted to get out of that meeting, and we would go along and the support worker would very much advocate on their behalf. So they would talk about um, what they, you know, did they need a house, where did they need the house, and make sure that they were getting what they needed. After that appointment, the support worker would then debrief with them. How did that go? What learning did you take out of that? The next appointment, again, we would meet them beforehand. 
maybe in a coffee shop, how are you feeling about this? What's happened since? Are you comfortable talking at this meeting? Let's talk through what you're gonna do. I'll be with you, I'll be there. Almost a hand-holding type approach. Afterwards, kind of debrief, how did that go? What went well, what didn't go well? Third meeting, again, I'll meet you beforehand. I'll talk you through it. But you go in, I'll sit outside in reception. I'll meet you afterwards and take you for a coffee. Can I see how you, you, you know how it went? Doesn't always follow that three-step programme, but that's obviously what we're kind of aiming for. We want to get to the point where the people that we're helping and supporting actually don't need us anymore, and we're able to move on to helping the next people. So as I said, a variety of organisations are the chairs and the vice chairs. They've all been voted on, and you see some of the members today. So the first year, we're in year two, uh, the first year we very much focused in on small numbers, people much nearer the labour market. We looked at placements, we looked at SBQs and we looked at training. Of those people, it was about helping them get kind of nearer and into work and, and our results kind of speak for themselves. This year we've widened that out because we've got the support workers in place, there's me in place, there's a whole project team kind of supporting that. And what we're, we've looked at this time round is very much widening out that journey people much earlier on in their recovery. How can we help them? What do we need to do with those individuals to help them get ready for the next step? I'm gonna just talk through some examples of some of the things that we've done with people. Um, we, we've done a variety of different things. Everything from the SVQs are still very much part of what we do, the placements that we offer people. And we've tried both paid and unpaid placements to see what suits better. Notice obviously the comment earlier about DWP and volunteering. We've been very fortunate um, with the DWP in certain areas kind of really supporting that. But I totally appreciate that that's been an issue. We've also done COSCA courses. We've done individual courses around IT, personal development. And we've done some Erasmus trips as well. Um, now those have been for staff and partners. Because our programmes are very much around what people actually want and need. So we've done some Erasmus trips where we've taken people over <coughs> to live and work in a foreign country for two to three weeks, depending on the placement. And the opportunities that those individuals then have when they come back and the different experiences that they can take to an interview. Talk about working in a challenging situation. Communication, having to communicate when it's not your natural language, all those sorts of things are just setting people up and you know to have a different experience to hopefully make them that wee bit more employable to somebody. We've, as I say, personal development courses. We're about to do next year a warehousing course. Uh, we're really looking at, we've tried to base the stuff that we've done, particularly the last kind of six months and into next year, on what people are actually looking for, as well as what the labour market are actually requiring. Because there's no point us going off and thinking up this lovely, program for individuals and then actually it, nobody wants to do it or there's absolutely no demand for people if they have that qualification or that training behind them. So it is very much about focusing in on individuals. But we are absolutely about changing people's lives. So it's about helping people put all that kind of holistic support, looking at every aspect of them and how we can help them move forward. We are Glasgow based. All our eligibility is that they need to be a Glasgow resident, they need to be unemployed, and they need to be in recovery. Obviously, for some of the programmes that we've done, that recovery, we've maybe looked at clean time and things like that. But to come on and get support, it's just around them doing that. And then we would work with them on that individual basis to link them into whatever is the appropriate support. Yes, we have 30 partners, and some of those partners do absolutely amazing work as far as really specific employability support, as well as all the other stuff that they do. But if, if the partner doesn't provide it, then we're about well, who does, and where can we get that, and where can we get the best support for that individual, so as we can help them kind of move forward. But it is about making a difference, and it's not just about the individuals that we're supporting, it's around their their families, their support network, and everybody else who kind of links in with them. I think I've cut myself so short. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, do you want me to say down for questions? Thank you.